How precious is your steadfast love, O God! The children of mankind take refuge in the shadow of your wings. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. Welcome back to Light from the Light. This is our channel that focuses on the light of God's Word that provides the illumination for the issues of our life so that we can think God's thoughts after Him. When we have our thinking and our lives illuminated by the Word of God, we learn how to think and how to act on the basis of God's Word, the Bible. I'm Robbie Dean. I'm the pastor of West Houston Bible Church, and we're continuing our study of God's powerful promises. And we're in the section dealing with the eternal security, our assurance of our salvation. And as we continue to look at verses related to our assurance, it reminds us that we are secure in our salvation, not because of what we do, not because we persevere, not because we are obedient, not because of any human factor. We are secure for the same reason we're saved. It is because of the work of Christ. He saved us and he secures us. Remember a few weeks ago, we looked at Jesus saying, I give them salvation. They shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. We are kept by his power. Now, I want to say something about that word keep, because we find it here in verse 5, where we read, who are kept by the power of God. This is a phrase that shows up quite a bit in these passages that relate to assurance of salvation. In episode 22, uh, which was on Jude one twenty four, the verse said, but to him who is able to keep us from stumbling. Able, that indicates the power of God. God is all-powerful. There is nothing that God cannot do that he desires to do. He is able to keep us from stumbling. We also find this same language in a verse we'll look at uh, next week, 2 Timothy 1.12. He is able to keep. He has the power to keep us, protect us. And this word shows up a lot in these verses, but sometimes another word also shows up. And we'll find an interesting thing in this, in these two verses, because in one place we see reserved in heaven for you at the end of, end of, verse, uh, end of verse four, and the English reserve translates the usual word for keeping. And then in the next verse, there's another word that is translated keep. That word has to do with guarding or protecting something. Uh, so the translators chose to use reserved for the first one and keeping for the second. But, but both of those words used together in this passage indicates how secure our salvation really is, uh, dependent upon God's power and his ability. So let's look at these verses. Let's look at 1 Peter 1, 4, and 5. To an inheritance, incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God, through faith, for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Now, one thing we should note here as we look at the context is that these two verses are actually part of a whole sentence that began back in verse 3. It's a long sentence. There are some wonderful ideas in this sentence, some things that refer to very important doctrines, but we don't have time to do a complete study of it. I just want to focus on the part that relates to our assurance. Now, let's go back to verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, according to his abundant mercy, has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, 
reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Now, this kind of statement that begins with blessed be the God and Father is a, is a blessing statement, focusing on blessing God. Uh, this statement is identical to one Paul states in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. But we don't actually bless God, do we? Because God is totally self-sufficient. There's nothing that we can provide for him, nothing we can give him. In fact, this is really a Hebrew idiom, a Hebrew phrase that is used many times in the Psalms and means simply to praise God. It was just another way of saying praise God. Uh, some people might call this a doxology from the Greek word doxos, which means glory. It's a statement that praises or glorifies God. So in this part of our promises, as we zero in on promises that tell us that God is the one who keeps us saved, that it's his power, his incredible omnipotence. We're reminded of a passage in Jeremiah, Jeremiah 32, 17. And in Jeremiah 32, 17, Jeremiah says, Ah, Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. There is nothing too hard for you, nothing too hard for God. If we think about everything that's involved in God's creation of the heavens and the earth, uh, from the uh, smallest microsystems to the greatest macrosystems of the galaxies, that God made all of it and he just spoke it into existence by the word of his mouth. So there's nothing too difficult for God. And so in eternity past, he was able uh, to devise a perfect plan for salvation because in his omniscience, the fact that he knows all things, all things that are going to happen, all things that could possibly happen, he knew that if he gave his creatures the freedom of choice to obey or disobey, that they would disobey. And that if that happened, that he would desire to save them. And so he had a plan for salvation, which envisioned that his son, the second person of the Trinity, the eternal son of God, would enter into human history and that he would be rejected and crucified. And that at that time of his crucifixion, God the Father would impute to Christ, would count to his account our sins so that Christ would pay the full penalty for all the sins in human history. So if God's power is that powerful and that extensive, then if he can save us, he can easily preserve us and keep us in our salvation. So we don't have to be concerned that there may be some sin that we forgot, some sin that is too great for God, some sin that God forgot to pay for. Uh, all we have to do is trust in him. So let's look at our verse. In 1-4, we find this statement, according to his abundant mercy. Now, mercy is God's grace in action. How extensive is God's grace? It's infinite. Everything about God is infinite. So it is sufficient in its infinity to provide for us. So according to his abundant mercy, he has, he's the one who has begotten us again. Now, God can't just randomly regenerate us. Regeneration comes through faith. We studied this back in episode 18 in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. And, and so, for example, when you see the phrase in Ephesians 2, 8, for by grace you have been saved through faith, the word saved refers back to being made alive together in Christ in Ephesians 2, 5. Saved comes through faith. That means faith comes first. For example, if you were to ask me, uh, how do I get to the kitchen? And I say, well, the kitchen is through that door. You have to go through the door before you get to the kitchen. So if we are saved through faith, saved is on the other side of the doorway. We have to go through faith 
in order to get that salvation. So it is through our faith that God regenerates us. And he is the one that out of his grace, out of his abundant mercy, has born us again, has begotten us again, has given us a new life and caused us to be born again as it's translated in the New American Standard. Now, this process of rebirth, this process of being made alive again is an irreversible process. God doesn't make us alive again only to make us spiritually dead again. You can't commit one sin and then lose your salvation and then lose your, you become spiritually dead again, and then you become spiritually alive again. It, it just doesn't work that way. As so many things have to happen that God does for us in the instant of our regeneration that, that there, it's not a process that it's, it's back and forth. It, once it occurs, it occurs for all time. First, we believe in Christ and his death payment for our sins. And instantly, God the Father regenerates us. It's caused ultimately by his love, but it's through faith, not because of faith. Then what we see here is a, a verse shift focus to the future, to our future certain expectation. He has in the past begotten us again to something for the future, to a living hope, which is accomplished by a finished work of Christ, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He was the first resurrected, called the first fruits. then we follow. A third thing that we should notice is that a living hope relates to the rewards Christ will give us at the judgment seat of Christ. It is living. It's not a dead hope. It's alive. And hope refers to a confident expectation of something, confident expectation of our eternal salvation. And another word for rewards is inheritance. It's eternal. And this inheritance is described as incorruptible. It, 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 it can't be corrupted. It, it's not going to rust. It's not going to grow old. It's not going to warp. It is incorruptible. And second, it is undefiled. And third, it does not fade away. Uh, then we see that it is reserved for us. Now, this is a word I referred to earlier in Greek that is usually translated by the English word keep. So our inheritance is kept by God here. But because of a word that's used later on, they chose to use that word to translate it as keep. And here they use the word reserve. But it means that God keeps. He is the one who keeps this in reserve for us. He keeps our inheritance for us. And the word us then are those who are believers, who are kept by the power of God. Now, this is a different word than we usually find uh, translated as keep. This is a Greek word here that means to be preserved or to guard something, to protect something against being, being stolen. So God is personally guarding our eternal destiny. He is personally preserving it and protecting it for us. So our inheritance, that, that part of which is our eternal salvation, is kept or preserved or reserved for us in heaven, uh, those of us who are guarded and protected by God. So this is done through faith for salvation, the text says. And again, it, it is through faith. God does it for us. It is we're trusting in him. So salvation comes through faith. Now, this is very important. So let's review this verse to an inheritance, incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Believer, this is a wonderful promise for us to be reminded that we're kept by the power of God. Let's review it one more time. To an inheritance, incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith 
for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. So I hope you are memorizing these verses. Uh, I find that there is an app that you can download onto a phone or an iPad, and in some computers you can download it onto the computer, and it syncs together between these devices. And this is called Verse Locker. You may be able to find uh, some instruction uh, in a YouTube for how to use it, but it's pretty simple. And I've been using it now for about uh, a month or six weeks, and I find it to be very, very helpful for reviewing my verses. And it's pretty simple to put them in there. So uh, hopefully you can figure it out. But it's a great tool to use. Most of us have our phones with us all the time. We can constantly be reviewing these promises. So until next time, remember that you are kept by the power of God. That's part of God's grace. It's part of his abundant mercy and that he keeps us saved for all time. So we'll see you in our next episode as we continue to study the verses that give us the promises for our assurance of salvation.